Hi everyone, haven't made a video in a while, so let's get started with the Royal Air Force's newest maritime patrol aircraft, the P-8 Poseidon. Now, a maritime patrol aircraft is an aircraft that is tasked to patrol maritime areas such as oceans, seas, and coastal waters. Whilst doing that, it's on the lookout for any enemy or potential enemy uh, ships or submarines and can potentially engage them, track them, and eliminate them. Now, the last time the Royal Air Force had an aircraft like this was in June of 2011, when the last Nimrod MRA-2 landed. This was the Royal Navy's mainstay maritime patrol aircraft, but when it was decommissioned in 2011, there wasn't a new one until the PA Poseidon went into service recently. Now, the PA Poseidon is a maritime patrol and anti-submarine aircraft. It's based on the Boeing 737-800 and has a length of about 39 meters, a wingspan of 37.6 meters, and has a maximum speed of 390 knots with a cruise speed of around 440 knots. It has a combat range of about 222 kilometers, which gives it about four hours of time on station for any anti-submarine operations. If anyone doesn't know what time on station means, this is the time it can spend above a certain area and operating there while still having enough fuel to head back to base. Now, the United Kingdom has ordered a total of nine Poseidon aircraft for a cost of about 3.2 billion US dollars, and at the time of writing this, has received four of those aircraft. Now, the PA Poseidon is an aircraft developed by the US Navy to fill their maritime patrol aircraft role and is replaced with the P 3 Orion. Now, for the last eight years, the UK has embedded a small element in a US Poseidon training squadron. Now, this gives the UK government, or has given the UK government, the option to regenerate maritime patrol capability should they want to. Now, the decision was taken around 2015 to order these brand new P-8 Poseidon aircraft, and the UK has designated the aircraft the Poseidon MRA-1. This is the first time the UK has had a true maritime patrol capability since June of 2011, when the last Nimrod MRA-2 aircraft flew its last flight. Since then, the maritime patrol task has been taken up either by our own warships, or by maritime patrol aircraft from the French Air Force and French Navy, uh, who have been lending us a hand as a sort of favour for us helping them in their conflict in Mali. Now, Pia Poseidon is equipped with high capability sensors, including radar, cameras, and sonar, to find and identify ships and submarines. Poseidon is also capable of performing search and rescue missions, as well as overland surveillance missions. The aircraft has a large bomber with space for five weapons, with an additional six weapons being carried on external hardpoints. These weapons include the Mark 54 torpedo, mines, depth charges, harpoon anti-ship missiles, and AGM-84H SLAM ER cruise missiles. Now, one benefit to this program is because it is a US-made aircraft, the US will most likely integrate a lot of its own and contemporary weapons into the aircraft, at least on a testing phase. This means that the UK in the future should have a large range of weapons to choose from that could be integrated into the platform. It is believed that so far the UK will only be operating torpedoes, mines, and depth charges, with the Harpoon anti-ship missile being integrated at a later date, or this being replaced by the UK's future anti-ship missile design. Poseidon is so far operated by only six other countries, with the US being the largest operator of the aircraft. Other countries include Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, India, and Norway. In August of 2019, the UK reinforced their commitment to joint anti-submarine operations with Norway, another P-8 customer. The main and key role for this aircraft will be patrolling the North Atlantic Ocean for ships and submarines of any adversaries the UK or NATO may have. One of the key areas that will operate in is the Greenland-Iceland-UK gap. If anyone doesn't know what this is, this is a choke point in the North Atlantic for Russian submarines. If they can pass through this area, then they can effectively have unfettered access to the Atlantic Ocean and any shipping within it. This obviously being a very bad thing for NATO or the UK if there's any conflict with Russia. This area is heavily patrolled by the UK, Norway, and any other NATO allies such as the US, who are all key players in the PA Poseidon program. It is possible as well that we may see a Poseidon deployed to the Gulf or the Mediterranean to support any anti-smuggling operations or to monitor naval traffic along the Strait of Hormuz due to the recent and ongoing tensions with Iran. For me, one of the biggest talking points with the aircraft is that there is not enough of them available to effectively deal with the missions they are being given. There are calls for the number of the aircraft to be doubled, as the four aircraft already present in the UK are currently being heavily worked, and the United States felt the need to deploy additional P-8 Poseidons to the UK to bolster NATO numbers in the area. To clarify, these are not UK-owned P-8 Poseidons, these are US-owned P-8 Poseidons that are working in the UK. Now, I believe if the UK acquired 16 or 18 P-8 Poseidon aircraft, 
This would allow us to more effectively employ the aircraft in larger numbers and in more operational areas. For example, we could have a group of four always available or operational from RAF Lossie Muff in Scotland for anti-submarine operations. At the same time, we could then have aircraft deployed to RAF Aquatiri in Cyprus and some to RAF Al Udeed in the UAE to patrol the Gulf or the Mediterranean. We could also potentially serve an extra base in the south of England to support operations in that area. Now, whilst it's unlikely that more aircraft will be ordered, the aircraft that already have been will significantly improve the UK's maritime patrol fleet, which previously didn't exist until or since 2011, and its ISAR-capable fleet, especially with the retirement of the Sentinel R1 aircraft and the potential reduction of the E7 Wedgetail aircraft, also based on the 737, due to enter service next year. Now, all in all, I think the P-8 is an incredible aircraft with some really great potential going forward. I really hope the UK continues with this program and potentially, as I hope, buys more of the aircraft. If you feel differently or you want to discuss the situation with me, please do comment down below and I look forward to hearing from you. Have a lovely day and I'll see you around.